Hello and welcome to Yesterday's Airlines. It's time for another fleet video and I'm gradually working my way through all the fleets in my 400 scale collection and in this video we're going to be going to the United States and taking a look at another one of the fleets of the major US trunk airlines of the regulated era and this video will cover National Airlines. Now National Airlines was always one of the smaller trunk airlines but it was also one of the more vibrant and colourful ones certainly in terms of its history. It's most famous obviously for its Sun King scheme and its incredibly sexist fly me campaign um, but it has an equally interesting history before the Sun Kings um, back when it was touted as the airline of the stars so I will take a look in this video across my national fleet which you can see here in all its glory and look at each of these models in a little bit more detail So National Airlines um, was really the airline of a man called George T. Baker. And Baker is one of those famous characters of early US aviation. He was a bit of a bastard really, by the sound of things. <laughs> um, and he ran the airline his way and anyone who didn't like it was obviously out the door. He had a very terse relationship shall we say with his major competitor which was a much larger eastern airlines um, and he ran a very colorful ship in the form of national throughout the 40s and 50s so um, what you can see here in terms of that early fleet is a selection um, a relatively small selection there's quite a few national airlines aircraft missing in 400 scale but we start down here we've got an early Convair. National was one of the few possibly the only in fact um, major trunk airline or trunk airline not to operate Douglas DC-3s or C-47s it operated um, I think they were Lockheed Electras um, the first Electra um, or Lodestars I can't remember but it certainly weren't DC-3s um, but they were an early operator of the Convair as you can see here wearing this national scheme and you can see um, on all these early aircraft that just behind the passenger drawer it, it says airline of the stars because it was supposed to be renowned for flying superstars um, on its route network which primarily was a network that came um, very much down the eastern seaboard to Florida and occasionally later in its history across to the west coast from Florida. Behind the convoy here, we've got a Curtis C-46 Commando. You can see set up as a freighter. And then behind that, a very attractive Lockheed Super Constellation. Now that was a bit of a strange buy for National because they'd been a staunch Douglas customer. So to buy a Super Connie's was unusual or typical of Baker's kind of unusual way of running an airline. As I said, um, they were primarily a Douglas customer for a long time and they had a reasonably large fleet of DC-6s and DC-7s. And here we've got a DC-7B. Now into the jet age um, and National was another one of the airlines which was interested in the jet props and ordered Lockheed Electras, or look, technically it's a Lockheed Electra 2. And here we've got the delivery scheme for the Electra. In fact, National, I think, operated the first pure jet service of any airline when it's, or of any US trunk domestic airline, that is, um, when it sneakily leased some Pan Am 707s. But it didn't choose a 707 itself. It was far keener on the Douglas DC-8. And here is an early DC-8. It's not in the delivery scheme. It's in the scheme that was one slightly soon after. I think, in fact, that National slipped in as well ahead of Eastern at this point in time um, and stole the Eastern orders when Eastern decided it wanted the slightly um, better performing later models of the DC-8. Um, so as I say, Baker was a real wheeler dealer and was super keen to, um, to make others look stupid. In fact, he slightly swindled Pan Am on those 707 deal as well because Pan Am was hopeful that they might be able to acquire National. He kind of strung them along. So National into the early 60s was primarily operating Electras and DC-8s with some leftover Convairs and prop liners um, like DC-7s and even those Connies which I think were moved on to freight duties for a while. Um, but in the early 60s, 
George Baker did sell the airline and he sold it to a man called Bud Maytag who'd been the uh, who'd been running Frontier for a while and Maytag really changed the airline he, uh, he it was not as frugal as it had been under Baker and he introduced this new look though it's not the dramatic look at this point in time um, and this scheme is typically known as the kind of proud N um, because you've got this new N logo on the tail and National was an early customer for the 727 100 as you can see here now there's definitely lacking um, in 400 scale aircraft wear in this scheme um, there should be more an Electra and some more DC-8s and all we've really got is that 727 and in the background we've got a stretch DC-8 of which National operated a couple but of course um, it is not this era which National is most famous for. It is into the early 70s when they introduced a new scheme, the Sun King scheme, with this lovely new logo. And you can see here how the route network had expanded. This is actually probably a, a route map from the early 80s, but you can see kind of how National had made itself um, quite important up and down the eastern seaboard and across to the west coast and was beginning to quite early on get in on international routes from Florida to places like London, Paris, Amsterdam, Frankfurt. But the scheme that it introduced was called the Sun King. Initially the aircraft were unnamed like this lovely 747 but then they introduced this Fly Me campaign as you can see behind. I'm Cheryl Fly Me, the sort of thing you would never get away with nowadays but at the time it was even then it was reasonably controversial with feminists. Um, and that sort of aircraft start to gain the names of aircraft, as you can see, oh, sorry, of the flight attendants. Um, so here we've got a DC-8 stretch, and I think the aircraft is called, is it Elizabeth? I can't really see. Um, but they're on the front, and the concept was to use this marketing slogan to sell tickets, which it did quite successfully. Um, in front of that DC-8 stretch, we've got a freighter DC-8, and this is obviously from the time before the names were applied. Moving across, there's a 727-100. And you can see that initially, um, rather than just the names, you actually got a silhouette as well, as in this case, we've got Anne, and we've got a silhouette of Anne's head. But later on, they just put the name in a speech bubble, as you can see on this lovely DC-10, which was a more important aircraft for National than the 747. National continued to operate um, standard DC-8s, and here's Another beauty, this time with a name. And as the uh, the 70s wore on, National did change its scheme slightly uh, in that it started introducing a pure white version of the scheme. And that was about the same time that the Fly Me names had dropped. I'm not sure this model is actually 100% um, accurate in terms of having a Fly Me name at the same time as having um, the white belly. So the flying name was gradually dropped towards the end of the 70s. And here's another aircraft, 727200. And at that time, deregulation was coming along. National had been well run by Maytag. I think it was reasonably profitable, um, even if it was an airline which was very, very prone to striking. Um, so it was quite regularly grounded for periods of time. That wasn't such a problem in the deregulated era. It became much more of a problem um, later on. And National, much like Western, and several of the other smaller chunk airlines, was coveted by others. In this case, um, it was coveted by Frank Lorenzo, that infamous character, and also Pan Am. And in the end, Pan Am won, but at the cost of paying vastly too much money for National, money it could ill afford. And then it made a complete hash of integrating it with its own services. So it was a very unhappy ending in many ways, I imagine, for many national employees who ended up working in Pan Am, an airline with a completely different um, idea about how to fly and a very stratified environment. And really, um, National's network kind of went by the by very quickly. Pan Am had been so desperate to get a domestic route network, but it, its travails in the 80s basically destroyed that network and you've got to think that they would have just been better off starting their own domestic airline rather than buying national to be honest but nonetheless 
National has um, another exciting and interesting history, even for one of the smaller trunk airlines. A lot of characters, a lot of attractive schemes, some controversy, really the sort of thing that makes American aviation history so interesting. So I hope you've enjoyed this look through my National Airlines collection. Um, I should probably say that pretty much all the models here are made by Aero Classics. If I look through, I think the only one that is not is that last 70-70-100 over here, which is the Gemini Jets aircraft. Um, hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, leave a like if you did, and obviously check out yesterdaysairlines.com where I've got a detailed look at all the airline um, liveries worn by National. Also, um, lots of other content about aviation history and 400 scan models. Check me out on Instagram at Yester Airlines and at Facebook. Hope you've enjoyed the video again, and keep an eye out for the next one. See you later.